One night, I ended up in the hospital with severe pains. They were here. It turns out I had pancreatitis. But what is pancreatitis? In this video, I'm gonna briefly explain to you what pancreatitis is. I'm gonna to talk to you about my experiences and explain my internal mental freak out when I was told I need to eat low fat. You know, some people like to only post like upbeat peppy videos on YouTube. I don't know how to make pancreatitis peppy. Like, do I dance while I'm talking about pancreatitis or, I don't know, um, play some funky music in the background? I don't think it's gonna increase the peppy factor. I fell on the good side of pancreatitis. I had acute pancreatitis, which is a short-term style of pancreatitis style. There you go, fashion. Made it sound fashionable. There are people though that end up tipping over or go straight to chronic pancreatitis which is much more painful and obviously ongoing chronic and it doesn't sound pretty at all so I feel pretty lucky. The pancreas has two main jobs. One, to release hormones, one of which is insulin and the other is to create these powerful enzymes, 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 enzymes. I digress. Powerful enzymes that help you digest your food. If either of those goes wrong, nothing is right. Look at me, I'm shaking around. <laughs> Quite simply, pancreatitis is when your pancreas, an organ in your body that, that does those two jobs I just spoke about, is inflamed. And when it gets inflamed, <laughs> it does not feel nice. Part of my lucky was that I only had like a handful of hours of pain like maybe three three and a half I, I don't exactly remember but the other part was that my husband was home I woke up during the middle of the night to go to the toilet so I came downstairs wasn't feeling good by the time I got back to the bottom of the stairs I questioned whether I should go back up them because I thought I was going to faint but my husband was upstairs I didn't have my phone on me and he sleeps with earplugs because I snore. <clears throat> I kind of snore. I think I snore. No, I do snore. Anyway, so I thought I have to get back up these stairs because if I don't, he's not going to know I fainted and I'm not going to have a clue what's going on. So I get back up the stairs and it's not good to wake my husband suddenly. He kind of has these like wake up moments where he freaks out or doesn't know where he is. He gets like really disorientated, but I had no choice. I needed help. And I was like boiling up really fast and um, I wake him up and he's stunned. Obviously he's like a stunned mullet. He's like, okay, what's going on? And um, <laughs> he tells me later, <laughs> he tells me later that when he woke up, he didn't know where he was. He was having one of those kind of like, I don't know what's going on here. And all he saw was a naked woman and he didn't know who I was at the time. And he didn't want to reach out and touch me because he thought, well, that's rude. <laughs> bless him <laughs> and good boy <laughs> um he puts i said i need the aircon on he puts the aircon on he pushes it he pushes he pushes pushes the air down onto me and i'm sitting there in this pain this pain that comes like right up under here and it's kind of going out everywhere and um i don't like to be an alarmist like usually i'm like you know what sit down have a cup of tea have a glass of water whatever yeah, no, it probably took less than two minutes and he asked me, do you want to go to the hospital? And I said, yes. So we get into the car and halfway there, the pain kind of starts subsiding a bit. And I kind of go, maybe I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't okay. And he said, well, we were kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because the car needed fuel anyway. And out here in the country, there's not too many of the gas stations, like, you know, every five minutes apart. He said, let's just keep going, get you checked out. So I got admitted and they stuck all these things on me and they were making, um, they checked my heart, which makes sense. Um, it was my heart, beauty. 
oh, they tapped my arm, they put one of the drips in here, and then they didn't think they got a very good spot, so they put the drip in here, and then they couldn't get blood from there. That was a good one, so they swapped back to this one. It turns out this one, I don't know if you can even see that. <laughs> oh, there's a bruise there. <laughs> it's really good. That was a bit dramatic, you probably didn't need to see my underarm here. Um, yeah, so they ended up, they asked me a bunch of questions and sussing stuff out and um, a doctor came and in the end they gave me morphine, which I was a bit hesitant about because my daughter had it and she didn't like it. Um, I didn't like it to start with. I think the quote was, ew, gross. Apparently I revert back to a 15 year old when I'm not well. Um, but then after that, it did take the pain away, which I was very grateful for. And again, that was it for me pain wise. And I'm glad I didn't have to have it anymore. So the doctor came in and he asked me a bunch more questions and they thought that it was gallstones, but you know, there aren't too many ultrasound machines working at like I don't even know what time it was, like maybe 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. So they admitted me and I had to wait, but they did take my blood. And it turns out one of the telltales of pancreatitis is they test for this chemical called lipase. Chemical? I'm not sure if that's it's probably the wrong word. I'll write what the other word is up here somewhere. Um, and a normal level for this is between like 0 and 100. Mine was 3,670. It was a little above. <laughs> they were a little concerned at that. So they kept, they wanted to keep me in overnight. This was a Friday as well. So I was in overnight and I didn't have any more pain, but I was just super uncomfortable. And then they redid my test the next day. And it turns out they had reduced from three and a half something thousand to 88. So I had limited pain. I wasn't nauseous or vomiting, which are other key fact symptoms of pancreatitis. For me, I just had severe pain pretty much. And then the next day, like tired and uh, bloating. Because essentially the food, <laughs> this is how I measure it. Food goes in here, food goes down in here. Food can't get past here as fast because your pancreas can't digest it to get it down and then to, you know, so feeling very heavy and bloated kind of thing. So the catch was before I got the results of the second blood test. Oh, totally skipping ahead. Ultrasound, nothing. <laughs> there was nothing there, nothing. The doctor thought it could be viral. So the main ways that you, oh God, I'm so scatty. The main ways that, uh, that caught the main things that cause pancreatitis is like heavy alcohol, drinking um, and gallstones um, which the doctor came and asked me and you know they, they think they probably had a slam dunk case because alcohol is the most common cause and he said do you drink alcohol he may have said it with a less judgmental face but I said nope not really I was like maybe one glass or cider every three months if that <laughs> which is true um, and it turns out I didn't have a gallstone. Well, they couldn't see a gallstone. Doesn't mean I didn't have one, but there wasn't one present. Anyway, so he thought it was viral. And then my pancreas got like pissed off at the butter chicken I ate and like it weakened it or something. That was my understanding anyway. So he said, completely unrelated to food at the time. And anyway, I had a wedding to go to. And so I wasn't sure, like, I was thinking, right, are you going to let me out at like four o'clock? Because if you are going to let me out at four o'clock, couldn't you just let me out at 12 o'clock? Which the nurses and the doctors and like the people doing the blood test, all of a sudden everyone knew I had a wedding to get to. Um, they were so lovely. A nurse, even, <laughs> my husband came and dropped off my things after painstakingly searching for things that I was asking for. Love him. And the nurse found me um, a room where there was four beds not being used in the shower for those four beds in that area. She said, you can shower here and get ready like undisturbed. She was so good. So I'm in a bathroom at the hospital, not the bathroom in my room. Another nurse has taken me to this bathroom so I can shower and 
hopefully get ready for a wedding I'm supposed to go to today um, without being interrupted. <laughs> it's just really, everyone really everyone knows about the wedding, which is really lovely. So um, shower time. I'm waiting for some results to come back, so I don't know if it's good, bad, or otherwise. But if it's okay enough, then I can go. And if not, then I'm not even going to talk about the if not at the moment. We'll see. Turns out that's when my levels have dropped to 88 and they discharged me. But they said viral and you're fine, you know, just rest. Mind you, they didn't tell me that I should have any time off or anything. Like, I mean, I wasn't in pain or vomiting, but I wasn't exactly like, you know, like, I don't know, whatever this is. Um, yeah, so I just, that was it. The doctor said, you know, chances are, you could have just had a once off, which uh, is quite common for people to have like a once off of this and then it never happens again. And I was like, beauty. It was like quick stay in a hospital, bit of a life experience that I wasn't expecting, off to the wedding. So off I go, get re ready really quickly at the, the parents-in-laws, jump in the car. Sweat balls up in the car, I take my coat off. lovely like it, I was, I'm so glad I made it because you just you can't do those things over you know in people's like big life moments while they went off after the ceremony to get photos we went down to get an ice cream <laughs> the guy said it was unfood related and I'd been eating some pretty average food and you know what I just wanted to sit on a lovely piece of grass by the river with an ice cream cone and my husband looking hot right I'll put a photo up and um, I don't think I was looking hot either. I was like pretty light. <laughs> um, yeah, so we go into the reception and I eat food like normal. Like I feel a bit full, but you know, it's, I felt rude. Anyway, anyway, I just did it. I was feeling like tired-ish, but not too bad, whatever. <sighs> and then it happened. The nut bush came on. And the problem with that is the way that other people do it, I'm not calling them soft. I'm not. Maybe I'm just calling me more intense. Oh, I feel like I need to do a demonstration now. I can't use the music though, cause you know, YouTube music crap. So hold that thought. This is gonna look really funny with this thing I'm wearing as well. Cause it's like, Scorts. I don't know, there might be like a cool new name for it now, but um, I don't know if you'll be able to like discern <laughs> what my legs are doing. <laughs> I'm only going to do my version for a very limited time because I am still kind of recovering and I get tired really easily. And there's also like a ledge here. Oh, you can't see my feet. God damn it. All right. Okay. Most people step. They just step and they go like this. Like this, right? Which is a nice little movement, nice little light workout like this. I double time it, which makes me feel like I've done aerobics after I've done like a full nut bush like this. And I was in heels, because that's always the way it goes. So making sure I'm all packed in. So I go, I jump in between each step. <laughs> it feels weird without the music. Okay. 
that's that's enough of a demonstration. <laughs> so I nut bush my ass off in my glittery dress and my heels and I get back to the table and all of a sudden it hits me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> Between the food that it turns out I probably shouldn't have been eating but the dancing and the exerting myself I just I fooled myself into thinking that that was a good idea. So yeah wedding was done though got to experience it went home. So the wedding was on the Saturday um, so I went to hospital on Friday, stayed Friday night, wedding on Saturday, went home, stayed home Sunday doing nothing, woke up Monday and went, no, I need another day. I don't feel good. The hospital didn't say anything, but I can have a sick day. It's fine. It's pretty, pretty shabby. I felt really shabby. Um, shabby is probably <laughs> too nice a word. Tuesday I woke up though and I felt like maybe not as crap. And so sometimes when you feel not as crap, I think, well, you know, when you go to work and you just get on with it and then over the course of the day, you ignore or are distracted by how you feel and you just get rid of it. No, I stupidly went to work. I shouldn't have. I felt horrible. And I actually think it put me back a couple of days too. It just, I ended up leaving work early, probably three o'clock. I probably should have left at 11, <laughs> maybe earlier. And yeah bad idea i was just useless i couldn't like lift my arms nothing like the next day wednesday i just laid flat doing nothing all day i think i spent the, the, the day watching Rhett and link good Mo good mythical morning videos um which was great um so i caught up with my doctor the next day and he was like yeah i think you should have some time off and he looked at my um results and things like that and he said i don't think this is viral at all None, nothing here to me indicates viral, so what the hell? Um, he said, I feel that maybe gallstone was the answer, that's what you have had, but it didn't show up because it was gone, like maybe it was on the smaller side. Um, he said, so really at the moment, I recommend you eat low fat foods because the pancreas needs a hand. Usually, not saying all these things are good for you, but fried foods like fatty red meats, like heavy creams, all that kind of jazz, soft drinks, um, your pancreas can kind of deal with, you know. Um, again, moderation is the key. But when the pancreas is pissed off and not working 100%, it needs a break, right? So you do low fat food, which is much easier uh, for it to process. I don't think I understood though, the gravity of low fat food. So yeah, that was the next part I had to tackle. I feel like I've been talking for way too long now, so I'm gonna end it here and call this pancreatitis one. <laughs> I will uh, do another video talking about my uh, struggles with low fat food and um, let alone the energy to do anything with food. Um, and how I had to kind of teach myself some of the basics and how I wasn't very good at that in the beginning. So yeah, if you made it this far through my utter ramblings, wow, maybe we could be friends. <laughs> but thank you for watching, uh, like and subscribe to my very baby new channel and enjoy your day. Enjoy your day. I have to think of like a sign off. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. So I don't know. Oh, can you see the creative juices flowing? <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to work on it. Yeah, I got nothing. Okay, I'm not working on it now. All right, thanks for watching. See ya. <laughs>